2014 that my son was coming. Um, I, I don't necessarily, I mean, we talked about it a little bit with the, the schools and the way they are now. I don't think that university is for everybody. And I don't think it's the, the correct path for everybody, but I knew, I knew that when I was done playing, I'd want to do something in flying. And I also knew that I would never want my son to ever have an excuse to not go to school. Um, so that was the big influence for me was my number one was my son's on the way. I don't want my son to ever have an excuse. There's not. You wanted to show Kyson that you could do it. I want to show Kyson that there's not an excuse. I want to show Kyson. I wanted to show children everywhere. My life is revolving around children. And my, you know, I have two number one bucket list items. One is to climb Everest and two is to open an orphanage. Um, and so, you know, everything that I have going on, whether it's the podcast, whether it's the shirt company, hat company, deviate, um, you know, whether it's the minor league nonprofit more than baseball, players for the planet, I am more, which is my children's foundation. It's all revolved around each other, getting to the point that I'm able to or- open an orphanage. I want to talk a little bit. Uh, I first met you through baseball country, uh, some work you're doing with uh, Sam Marsnick um, in Jenna, Alabama, small town, <laughs> USA. Uh, it's a really a neat program where you, you all bring uh, – about 40 to 60 players from the Dominican Republic uh, in the summer uh, help mentor them, uh, get them in, a, in the right situation, uh, work with their mindset, and uh, teach them potentially a new way of life outside of their hometown there in the Dominican. If you could t- talk a little bit about the impact Sam has had on your life uh, and what you all are, are doing uh, there at Baseball Country. In 2009, when I was getting in trouble and drinking and, you know, missing games, whatever, the Yankees were actually going to send me home. Um, Ron Dock had worked with Josh Hamilton at the time. So Josh Hamilton reached out to a couple times and tell me, like, hey, straighten up, like, look what you're doing, all this. Um, But one guy that they put me in contact with, Sam Marsnick, and he was, I believe, supplement of first round for the Rangers. Well, hey, let me ask you, when when Josh Hamilton calls you, did that get your attention? Did you listen or did you just say, ah? I have, I have, I'm not a big memorabilia guy. Um, I have three signed jerseys. Derek Jeter's home jersey signed. Marion Rivera's home jersey signed. Josh Hamilton's Ranger jersey signed. So Josh Hamilton is, I read his book in high school and was a huge, huge influencer um, in that aspect. Obviously, I didn't take it to heart in some, but no, I was a huge fan of, fan of that. And that was a really cool experience for me to, you know, be able to, to talk to him on the phone and things like that. But ultimately, it was because I was getting in trouble. And they introduced me to a guy named Sam Marsnick. And Sam was like, hey, how about you just go to church with me? I didn't grow up in a church family. I just didn't. I didn't grow up growing to it. Um, you know, I'd heard all the sermons. I'd been plenty of times, but just wasn't something that I that I had done and so I'm like all right well here's this bible thumper just trying to get me to go listen to this and he just kept going and kept going and kept going and I finally on I kept going in April 4th 2010 Ken Witten did a a sermon on what the cross meant um and I was there with Sam and it was the first moment and, and leading up to that I had you know I had people tell me like God has a bit, bigger picture for you God has a bigger plan for you and I'm like oh and you're talking to him let's go so that was my mindset, and I, it was for some reason that night, I just felt like I finally realized that this whole time God was just knocking at the door, and I just wasn't opening it. So that was the first time that I had opened the door and let him in and ended up doing a mission trip with Sam. But Sam was the reason that, you know, I straightened my act up, the reason that, you know, I, I'm connected in the way I do it, the reason that I went to the DR for the first time in 2010 for a missions trip. Um you know, Sam has been a huge influence and now knowing Sam, I I see this, the lifestyle that Sam lives in this deal and what he does and how selfless he is with these kids. And the big thing, and you know, the name of my, the minor league organization is more than baseball. Um, you know, I told you earlier that I used to be Slate Heath got the baseball player. And then I was Slate Heath got that played baseball. And, And that's why I love those two. And what I, really respect and love about what sam does is it's about so much more than baseball and we'll put in the podcast notes some links to some of these organizations where you all can get involved you can maybe participate in a trip to the dominican republic or help support baseball country and get involved in some of the initiatives that uh, slade heathcott has been involved with um slade it's been so good to have you i want to kind of leave us with this uh you know, now you're at the point in, in your life where, you know, you're 
your tagline is serving the world one day at a time. You talk uh, to, to young people as, or, or anybody about the ability to learn from turning a mistake into a lesson. So if there's one, maybe two things you could leave our listeners with that maybe uh, starts them off maybe a new, a fresh way, a fresh approach, not only in the batter's box, but in life, what could you share with them? Don't give up. Keep stepping. You know, there's a quote, a Rocky quote. Everyone knows it, but it's not about how much you can or how much or how hard you can hit. It's about how hard you can get hit. It's about how much you can take and keep moving forward. So don't give up. You either have a dream, no matter what. The, the awesome thing about dreams and the awesome thing about people saying it's impossible is people said it was impossible to go to the moon. It was impossible that we'd fly planes. It's impossible that we'd have a four-minute mile. All these things have been told that they're impossible, but the difference between those people that did that was somebody believed that it was possible. So you have to believe in yourself. Don't be don't be distracted by temporary happiness. Stay focused. And the most importantly thing that I, I tell everyone is, just like what your mom always said growing up, you are who you're around. So the people you surround yourself by are going to be the people and be the influence of who you become on a daily basis. So I think it's very big to pay attention who you're surrounding yourself by. Find out what you want and find out those people. And it may not be easy. It might be somebody close to you that stops you from wanting to do something. But just remember, no matter whether it's your loved ones, your mom, your dad, your brother, your best friend, your girlfriend, whatever it might be, they 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 care for you, they love for you, but they may be trying to stop you from telling you something that you know in your heart that is your passion and, and is possible for you because nobody's going to know what's possible, only you. Slade Heathcott, thank you so much for joining us here on Behind the Dish. Thank you, John. Hey, everybody, my name is Kyle, and I'm the producer for Behind the Dish with John Piper. We put a lot of effort in here to bring you the topics and guests that we think are relevant to the sport of baseball and to your everyday life. Thank you for listening, and we'll see you on the next one.